wake up, wake up, wake up, it's the first of the month. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Two Rivers Tuesday, where we continue the conversation from Sunday. We share a little bit about things that are going on in the life of our church family, and maybe just talk about random stuff that really has no purpose, like throw pillows. (laughs) Jesse just put a throw pillow behind his back right now to give him some extra support there in the lower back. I'm joined by Jesse Disney. Say hello, Jesse. Hello, Jesse. Oh, thank you so much for that. (laughs) Dad jokes. Yeah. How do you feel about throw pillows? Uh, less is more. Less is more. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that is an unpopular take. I, I am sure my wife is in that uh, that group as well because like I, there's two things that we have normally in excess of. It's coffee mugs and throw pillows. Yeah. At all times, and I've said like, hey however many cushions we can actually sit on that's how many pillows that we yeah. need <laughs> yeah, right. not like 16 <laughs> and so we have like three instead <laughs> so i'm just sitting here counting like we have a sectional couch in our living room and i think there are um six but maybe eight throw pillows on it so there's really room for two people to sit on it and unless you start moving the pillows and they're pretty exactly. they're 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 pretty pillows they make the room feel you know nice but so i'm not even i'm not even upset with my wife this uh-huh. is a bigger thing i'm i'm upset with whoever started this <laughs> yeah 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 that yeah. shouldn't have been a thing that i have to, if i go into someone's house who has this i have to like throw <laughs> yes. all their pillows into yes. the floor to actually sit down uh, they've made some great commercials about this yeah uh, i feel like the progressive commercial one of those it. like can't keep you from becoming your parents you know like how many throw pillows do you need i don't know I haven't seen it. That was so not what we were going to talk <laughs> about um, today, but but it did make me think about it. Um, hey, what is going on in the life of Jesse Disney right now? What are you like? What are you jamming? What are you listening to? What are Ooh. you reading? What are you watching? I am starting to watch uh, uh, the new. Uh, 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 Ahsoka, yeah, Ahsoka Star Wars series. Okay, so good. I've been behind on. I, I hardly watch any TV anymore. Okay. But I'm, I was talking with uh, Kyle Casey the other day, uh-huh. and uh, he's a fellow Star Wars nerd as okay, well. And yes. we, so we vibed on that. That's great. And uh, and so I was like, neither of us have seen it, so I'm starting to get back into that. Okay. Again. Okay. So yeah. So okay. I'm watching that. Uh, reading a, a couple different things. What are you uh, reading? Uh. Mainly, I just listen to audiobooks. Ooh. Like, if I'm actually okay. reading a book, it's, it's going to be like the Bible, or like um, we're going through like leadership books as a staff too. Mm-hmm. Um, but a whole lot of my time is done. I can I can read a whole lot more if it's on audio book. That's true. That's uh, true. And so, like, gospel comes with a house key. Always loved uh, revisiting if it's like a long trip. Uh, the Lord of the Rings. Oh my gosh, like, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I've never tried to listen to that, it's but I, so good. I imagine it, it's probably like 31 hours or something. It's very, very long. Yeah. 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 So back to the Gospel of the House Key, because that's, mm. that's a great book. The Gospel Comes with a House Key yeah. by Rosaria Butter, Butterfield. Uh, does she read it? She does read it. Okay. Yes. I love it when authors read their own books in the audiobook. Yeah. Because you, you feel like you get to know them, and who better to, you know put the inflection on uh-huh. you know the the sentences there, you can just tell sometimes like there's emotion in something or they speed up or slow down yes because they wrote it you know i love that yeah about audiobooks but i don't love reading a lot of things on audiobook just because i i'm such a mark i want to mm. mark things up so it's like if i'm learning if i'm reading to learn i'm marking it up i'm underlining it i'm circling things i'm making notes I'm yeah dog ear dog earing the pages um and that kind of thing. But if it's a fiction book or something just totally fun, I do love listening to the audiobook, especially when the author reads it. Yes. And I was telling you about this, and I've probably talked about this before. I'm going to sound like such a fanboy. I think last week on the podcast, I talked about Andrew Peterson. I did. I talked to about um, Pushing Back the Darkness by Raising Up yeah, Children. Right. Uh, this was a part of um, one of the intros to one of his songs on a live album. And uh, I just love his songwriting. I love his creativity. Um, he has written a series of children's books 
there's four books in a series called the wing feather saga and i started listening to it this year while i was on sabbatical and i loved it it was such an adventure i'm in the like fourth book I'm toward the end right now getting uh it's getting very intense and um and I just want to recommend it to you, parents. Uh, if you've got some kids who are maybe in like elementary school age, like I mean, it, there are some things that are scary in it, even though. But it is written for kids. Um, but just when they're really young, it, it might be a little bit difficult. But I highly recommend the Wing Feather Saga because the heroes are children, and there is a gospel thread or undercurrent underneath all of it, and you begin to pick up on it. And you're like. Oh my gosh, I know where he's getting this and I know where he's going with this and and it's beautiful. Does it have similar like um vibes as like uh, the Chronicles of Narnia? Cuz obviously like a lot of that was written yeah kind of as children's book but yeah. it's incredible and I could, like I'd love to go through those. Yeah, I would say that it's it is like the Chronicles okay. of Narnia um but with a with with far more whimsy. I mean, Ooh. as if there can be more whimsy, you know, Narnia where all the animals talk and right. all those kinds of things. But but there's a lot more. It's more fantasy. Um there's dragons and there's all kinds of weird creatures and trolls cool. and uh anyway, you got to read the books and um and I recommend listening to them because Andrew Peterson reads them and he gives voices to every single character which really enhances the experience. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah, and I'm actually going to talk about that when we get to the end of this, but um, that's something that I'm reading right now and thoroughly enjoying. Um, yeah, so it's just good to learn sometimes what we're listening to, mm-hmm. reading, um, watching even, uh, even though those things can sometimes be distractions, right? Yeah. On Sunday, we talked about um, just kind of continuing along in our First Love series and we were talking about kind of this great awakening that happens in Ephesus when the Apostle Paul shows up, the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon some people, and Paul goes into the city and begins to teach uh, about the gospel, and the Holy Spirit's moving mm-hmm. and changing people's lives, and just some, some incredible things are happening in the, in the midst of like one of the um, the like the hotbed centers of the occult in the whole world yeah uh was ephesus and so just just evidence that when god shows up um big things happen Mm -hmm. and lives change and i that's just one of the things that i've been really reflecting on is just um can lives really change right um because i the the longer i get oh or the farther i guess i get away from that that initial experience when, when God just woke me up Mm -hmm. and really did change my life and changed like so much about the decisions I was making, the way I looked at life, the people I was doing life with. Yeah. Um, it's like, I, I I get so, I get so much farther away from that, that I need to be reminded that like God still does incredibly miraculous things. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just about, um, you know, a declaration of faith and living a good moral life. Um, and we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on this later, but, um, it, it's about seeing, you know, the power of God within your life. And what does that actually look like? Hmm. Um, what does it look like to be led by the spirit? How can, if the spirit of the living God is living and moving within me, then I should expect to see some type of power, some type of evidence of that, not hmm. just a, uh, like a moral checklist uh-huh. that oh okay I'm I'm getting better no I'm like seeing nature like our our natures change yes um, the dead being brought back to life you know spiritually speaking and um, yeah seeing true life change exactly what we we're talking about yeah um, that's whenever you start seeing the power and yeah. then um, you know addictions breaking yes the the miraculous happening and. We have friends who are who are walking through some of this yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, like it is happening. Like this is not like something you read about on the internet mm-hmm. or that happens like in other places. Um, you know, those kinds of things are happening like right now mm-hmm. um, among us. Like that the Lord is doing powerful things in our lives. It's good to remember that. Um 
somebody, uh, Katie D's, shout out Katie D's if you're listening. Uh, she sent me uh, this um, earlier today uh, because I was talking about you know the occult and the darkness of Ephesus and and what God was doing there to totally turn evil on its head and um, and she said, hey, have you heard about Kat Von D? And if you haven't heard about Kat Von D, that's her, I guess, nickname. Um, she is, I'm going to read this. She is a Mexican-American tattoo artist, a television personality, an entrepreneur, and a recording artist. And so I think she became famous on the show LA Inc. Mm-hmm. with just being a tattoo artist. Yeah. Um, but she's also known for being like deep into like some dark stuff, like witchcraft like wit, yeah. kind of stuff. And she's got a whole following out there of people who are into that kind of stuff. And apparently, apparently, uh, apparently, apparently um, Jesus has gotten a hold of her and mm. she's given her life to Christ. And like she's like getting rid of her books, like the stuff that was happening in Ephesus. Like this is like happening in real time, yeah. right now in this uh, you know famous person's life here in America, and uh, it's kind of a big deal because of social media. You know, mm-hmm. she all of a sudden goes out there, says she's found new life in Christ, and Jesus is better, mm-hmm. as we were saying on Sunday, and she's got all this following of people like, wait, what? Yeah, you know, and it's like I think it has like disrupted that world of darkness and all of those people who have been following her, and that's about the extent of my knowledge of it. But I've just been poking around, reading a little bit about it. I listened to an interview um, or a snippet of it, um, and uh, I mean, that's just evidence that like people can change, like God Mm -hmm. can change uh, people. Yeah. I uh, I actually saw this same story on like uh, one of my feeds. I, I follow a few different music um, music feeds, and this particular one, or uh, like three of them, talked about this conversion. And like you said, it caused a huge disruption. Uh, there was some people who went to one side, like how how could she like turn her back on all of this stuff? Like we we were following her in this type of thing and now she's going to claim christ um and then you have other people saying like wow okay this Mm. even even those who have performed witchcraft or whatever this is uh can change their lives completely you know now she's uh instead of divulging into witchcraft and all these like quote-unquote Eastern uh, religious exercise. I think she talked a little bit about mm-hmm. yoga and things like yes. that. Um, she, she, like that's the that's the true nature change that I'm talking about. Yeah. Not just like, you know, being trying to be a better person type yeah, of thing. Right. No, like her whole nature has yes. now changed. Yes, she and is that's, a new that's, creation. She is a new creation, and that's yeah. the power and evidence that mm. we we see. Praise God for that. Yeah, and let's believe let's believe that that is real in yeah. her, and you know. As funny as it kind of sounds, maybe maybe funny to me, like to pray for someone I don't know who's a celebrity, but it's like pray for her because she sure. has an incredible platform. Yeah, I, I I can't look right now to see like how many followers she has, but mm-hmm. um, but holy cow, like what God what God could do with that, yeah. right? And then let's think about what God could do with our lives, yeah. right? Because we all have a story, you know, and and you know, for some of us, it's it's, it's this dramatic kind of shift. Or transformation in our lives and for for others of us it's it's kind of been more of a gradual thing that where the lord is continuing to to free us from mm. our sin and show us a better way and all those stories belong right yeah and they're all they all can be used to shine the light into the darkness um, so let's talk about the awakening that happened in ephesus and let's just kind of go back through what we saw when we read acts chapter 19 on sunday um we said that there were at least four things, and I know there were more. I just didn't have time to go into them. But the ones that I talked about that we saw in Ephesus where there was a hunger for more of God, whenever there's an awakening um, to the nearness and power of God's presence, His Spirit, um, there is always a hunger for more of Him. The second thing we said was that the name of Jesus 
is extolled or highly praised. Like all of a sudden we realize like, this is all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one. Yeah. Uh, the third thing we said is that there's a revelation that, um, not only is Jesus the name that is above all names, he's better. <laughs> Whatever he offers, it's better. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we see this evidence of that revelation by people coming forth and confessing and divulging their secret practices. Mm -hmm. And they're getting rid of this stuff. You know, they're burning their books. They're getting rid of it um, because Jesus is better. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we said is whenever there's an awakening to the nearness and power of God, um, there will be opposition. So I wanted to walk through those uh, a little bit uh, today. Uh, the first one is a hunger for more of God. And I talked about how the Ephesians uh, were known for their siestas in the middle of the day, um, a, a pretty long one apparently. And, uh, and that's when Paul would start um, teaching the gospel and equipping people who are learning about Jesus and learning how to follow him. And so um, I, I think it's important to, to realize that, you know, when when we begin to get a hunger for more of God, like we, we're probably going to need to give up something yeah. so that we can feed ourselves more of him, right? They were giving up their siesta. They're giving up their lunch break and their nap time. And it reminded me of a story that you told me about a time before you came on staff here about how you kind of had this similar experience. Yeah. Yeah. While I was at, uh, at Unum, and I think I talked about my time at Unum uh, a few weeks ago, but I, whenever I started seeing that, hey, this is my mission field, this is where God has placed me and I need to be in, intentional, hmm. Um, I started seeing it as a place where um, I, I can reach people that, you know, typical clergy wouldn't be able to. And so God has placed me here specifically. Uh, I started thinking of like a sleeper cell type of thing. And yes. I always thought that was kind of fun. Yes. Uh, but I've, I've been placed here to love Jesus in a very uh, unique environment, yeah. uh, you know, it seems you know, it's just regular good corporate American and we sure. were like we we're in like this scary marble building but like that's where God specifically placed me and so whenever I started seeing that and um, recognized I had a purpose for that I needed God's direction on hey what does it look like for me to share the love of Jesus here how can mm -hmm. I have gospel conversations in a place where honestly um it's not normally welcomed, especially in like a corporate environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I needed guidance. I, I needed um, I needed more of Jesus because I saw how desperate and needy that was. And I was awakened to that fact. Yeah. Uh, and so that started the hunger. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, I said, okay, I've been taking my 15 minute breaks. We were given like two 15 minute breaks a day and uh, a 30 minute lunch. And, wow. um, I would take each of those breaks and sit out on the steps out back and um, take that time to read. Yeah. And in that time, I went through a, a ton of scripture. And it was all all of that. Yes, I was learning uh, a lot about what scripture said and learning about God. And I remember specifically going through First Kings and um, learning a lot from that. But um, more or less, it, it was helping me put my antenna up mm. to say okay this is what everything if this is if, if jesus if this message of the gospel that i've placed my entire life on and staked my life on mm. is true it's the only thing that matters and me hitting my numbers today that's secondary mm. uh, so i need to have my antenna up and be intentional and i need god to show me what this is and so whenever i took that time to pray and to dive into scripture um, it helped me have my, <laughs> put my listening ears on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's right. Uh, and listen to the spirit. And you needed that. So that, that lunch break became like yeah. a way to feed your soul, but also give you what you needed. Yes. Um, and, uh, I, I, I think it, it doesn't have to just be our lunch breaks. Although for, right. for many of us that, you know, that's relevant to have kind of take a break in the middle of the day, have lunch, whatever we need to do. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to like, just jump on our phone, you yeah. know? Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so easy. Just let that be. I've heard 
one of our friends call it kind of like the adult pacifier, right? Just yeah. pick up your phone and let that pacify you, you know, for the, the next 30 minutes or mm-hmm. an hour. Um, another time um, that could be used for for this hunger for more of God or creating, developing a hunger for God um, might be at, at bedtime, kind mm-hmm. of that, that like that pre-bed Insta-binge, you know, yeah. or that pre-bed YouTube uh you know, scroll that ends up like lasting into the wee hours of the morning and you're like, I've got to go to sleep, you know, like, um, like what if we began to like the Ephesians, uh, give some of those times over to the Lord Mm -hmm. and and say, Hey Lord, teach me. I want more of you in my life. Like I need more of you in my life. I want to want more of you in my life. And so start there, you know, um, watch a sermon, you know, listen to a podcast, read mm-hmm. a book about Jesus, um, read your Bible. Right? What I used to do, what I, uh, also at Unum, I would just go walk around downtown and uh, I would pray, yeah. but I would also try to pray out loud. I realized at first I was getting some looks by uh-huh. some people. I was uh-huh. like, okay, I got some AirPods now. Yes. <laughs> so I put those in. They just think I'm having a conversation with a, you know, a random person. I'm having a conversation with God. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, this thing. you're cultivating that that appetite for yeah, him, and exactly. we have to do that because the world is just like coming at us mm-hmm. with so much stuff that'll just kind of like that's like junk food. Yeah, you know, it's like little snacks that that aren't really nourishing our souls. Yep, and and we want to see this kind of an awakening in in our lives and in our families and in our church. Um, this hunger mm-hmm. for more of God to be equipped with His Word um, to know how to share His love with others. To know how to know him more. So yeah, that's good. That was the first thing. The second thing was just that the name of Jesus was highly praised. And uh, this was just a realization in Ephesus that like, oh my gosh, this this Jesus has power over darkness. Mm-hmm. This, Jesus has power over evil. He, he is the name above all names, right? We know that from other places in scripture. And so um, I think one of the ways that we can do this in our lives is just to speak Jesus, um, more often, you know, just like, and I, I I don't know that I mean anything else than just like to be, to bring Jesus up more in conversation, Mm. just to say something as simple as like, praise the Lord that this happened, right? Like I prayed for this. That was an answer to prayer. Just always giving him credit for the good in our lives and, and meeting us in the heart, right? Just the name of Jesus on our lips, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's one way. Um, another way might just be worship, right? Just, yeah, definitely. And, and you have, um, the Lord's really been stirring in you in your own personal worship times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he, he has. And with, without that, um, I don't know if, if I'm worshiping throughout the day, if I'm worshiping throughout the week, uh, and we, we talked about this a, a, co- a few weeks ago, but it becomes more of a pattern mm. if I'm thanking God for the things that He's done in me yeah. and thanking or praising Him for just who He is. Um, that pattern of worship, whether it's musical or in prayer or something like that, I feel like I'm more attuned to those conversations mm. and, and like could lead to gospel conversations yeah. as well. As well, but if not anything, just to glorify Jesus in all things. Um. Uh, I've been reading in, in Proverbs recently, and in in Proverbs three, I want to say it's three six. Um, we know three five. Trust in the Lord and all your heart, and lean not on your on your own understanding. And I knew that I had yep. that locked away, yep. but I didn't have uh, six. He says uh, it says uh, acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He'll make your path straight. Yeah. So I think even acknowledging Jesus in the situations that we're at, acknowling Him in our conversations. Mm-hmm. Uh, is going to change and uh, change our hearts to the fact that, oh, God is at work in my lives, and people can see this. Yeah. Um, you can see God's provision, and His goodness in your life if you're talking about Him and yeah. uh, bringing Him up in casual conversations rather than you know talking about how uh, how He's come through for you, um, mm. like bringing up the motorcycle again. Um, got the the motorcycle two weeks before jordan's car broke down Hmm. 
and for a, a couple of weeks while we didn't have that instead of having to burden a, you know a family member or something like that or for for getting their car um god came through and he uh yeah and that, that that's something the timing that, worked out it, the timing worked out great and i tried to yeah and i tried to uh, attribute that to yeah. uh to god's provision mm. things like that yeah that's good that's good let the name of Jesus be highly praised. Yeah. The third thing we said was that in an awakening to the nearness and power of God, there is this revelation, this realization that Jesus is better. Yeah. He's better than, and, and we don't really, we don't always know this until we've tasted it, right? Yeah. Like, um, but Jesus is better. And what we saw in Ephesus was that people began to realize this and so they began to bring all their stuff that was like not better mm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know like that was worse right the stuff that was dragging them down mm-hmm. keeping them in the dark um, the stuff that was that had no life in it just like Kat Von D she realized like all these meditation practices all of these um, this witchcraft and, and these other you know eastern weird beliefs yeah. you know like had no life in them right yeah. Jesus is better and so there's this great confession that happens in Ephesus, and then people start bringing all their, all their magic books out and start burning them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that, that was bold action right there. And, it, and, uh, and so, you know, I just think um, for us, like what does it look like to, to try to apply that to our, our lives? And you, I think you asked a really uh, good question towards the end of your sermon where you said, um, who is profiting off my idolatry? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's It would be so easy to see, like, look at my, my bank statement, mm. look to see, like, uh, where I'm putting money uh, into to, to see... Do I am I living out that Jesus is better, or am mm. I putting it towards you know, uh, so many subscriptions on, yeah, <laughs> on uh, you know, for all these streaming services because yeah. I'm putting uh, so much emphasis on entertainment, yeah, or uh, am I Amazon or t- for, for in our case, Timu, mm. uh, <laughs> okay, nice. that type of stuff, yeah, we can look at, at our spending and see like these people, it, it's a never ending cycle because they, yeah. they want you, you talk, you shared about your uh, the wallet story, uh-huh. uh, which. You know, as soon as we start searching for something, you are going to find it, and then some. Yes. Um, and I, I think Jesus talks so much about our money mm-hmm. um, because, you know, it shows where our treasure yeah, lies. Well, it's just connected to our so much of our. It's just connected to our heart. It is. Jesus said, right? Exactly. And it's where we think we'll find life. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think just thinking about that question that was a hard question to ask but i had to ask it of myself Mm -hmm. i'm not going to stand up there and ask everybody else to think about that if i haven't asked it myself you know and um yeah it's a it's a good question to ponder Mm -hmm. um the last thing that we talked about was that whenever there is an awakening to the nearness and power of god there will be opposition Mm -hmm. because we are in a spiritual battle and it was the case in Ephesus when all of a sudden some of these people who were losing profits began to rally together and riot and try to silence those who were speaking the truth mm. about Jesus. There's, there's always going to be opposition when we awaken to the, to the reality that Jesus is better, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we, we, I, I, I encouraged us, I implored us on Sunday to wake up wake up and fight the back, <laughs> you know, yeah. fight the battle. There's a war going on for our souls. And, uh, and you and I were talking about this before we started recording. And I felt like there are at least three ways we could respond uh, when we think about this, uh, when we think about evil in our world mm-hmm. and just when we think evil, just think like ungodliness, you yeah. know, and things that are unbiblical. And there's a lot of that, you know, that we could point to. And uh, I think that there's at least three ways. And um, the first thing we could do is we could just, we could just hate all the people Mm. who believe those Mm -hmm. things. We could just hate the enemy. You know, we could, we could 
not only hate those beliefs, but hate the people who hold those mm-hmm. beliefs and hate the people who behave in ungodly ways. And, and we can see that if we're not careful and not guarding ourselves, that'll creep into our, our hearts. Yeah, we'll, hate, we'll hate people. Um, the second thing is we could just hide. We mm-hmm. could just like insulate ourselves and just kind of hole up and hide and create a kind of a Christian bubble to live in. With And before we know it, we realize like, I have no interaction with the outside world uh, that is lost mm-hmm. and desperately needing Jesus. Um, and we just kind of, before we realize it, we've insulated ourselves. Um, Christian friends, Christian school, Christian, you know, I don't know, whatever, you know. Right. Um, and I'm not bagging on Christian school, but I'm just saying, like, if we're not careful, we try to hide away. Yeah. And and we let, we leave the, the world to be destroyed by evil. Yeah. Uh, and and we, we talked about this earlier that it, it would be so easy to interpret that. So that first one, that first, like, to, to hate evil, you see that, I'm going to throw social media out there, and mm-hmm. people, you know. Yeah. Um, saying like you're going to hell t- type of thing like that's um, that's not what we, we need to be known for you mm. know and that second one can even distancing ourselves or yeah. cutting others off and making ourselves separate or like insulated mm-hmm. um, to the point where okay if you're not with me then you're kind of cut off uh, I'm, I'm pushing you away um, that can also be interpreted as hate because that's what the rest of the world does um, if you don't agree with my message, this is the message of the world. If you don't agree with my beliefs, hmm. you're dead to me. Right. I'm cutting you off. I don't want anything to do with you. Unfollowed, unsubscribed, whatever you want to say. Um, I, I want no part with you. Mm-hmm. Are we doing the same thing whenever we're insulating ourselves? Not being around those who think differently, look differently, or yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, are th- Even if that is not your heart... That is the message that's being conveyed yeah. to those people who you're distancing yourself from. Oh, they don't want anything to do with me. And so they must I guess therefore, Jesus doesn't want to have anything to do with me that, either. So Jesus doesn't want anything yeah. to do with me. And yeah. so like they hate me. So does God hate me? Well, okay, well, I don't want anything to do with him. Yeah. And that's such a hard thing. It, it's a hard line to find. I, I understand. Yeah. To try to, um, you know, to, to hate what God hates, but mm. don't hate the people. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then it's, it's to, um, to be engaged with the world and yet, um, draw a line to, to protect your family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, there are boundaries that we have to set, sure, right? Definitely, we just definitely. shouldn't insulate ourselves and, you know, dig a big moat and create an Island mm-hmm. and let's all live together in a big Christian commune and be done with it. That's heaven. And it's going to be great one day. Yeah. But until then there are people who are lost and, and, and will not be there. Right. Yes. And so, um, you know, I I was thinking about this. I wrote this in my journal a few days ago. Just like, if there's evil in the world, and there is, then eventually it's going to find its way into our lives. It's going mm-hmm. to find its way into our community. It's going to find its way into uh, the Bible Belt South, um, which is increasingly not a thing anymore. You right. know, I mean, it's not insulated anymore. It's going to find its way into our schools. It's going to find its way into our churches, no matter how vigilant we are, right? And so because there's evil in the world, shouldn't we go out and meet it Mm. with the light Mm -hmm. that has shown into our lives, right? Like we, the ones who have been empowered with the Holy Spirit, the ones who have the armor of God, like we, the ones who have the truth and the life and the way, right? Like, shouldn't we go out and meet that evil? Right. So, so to put a kind of a bow on this, um, the, the three things when we wake up to the realization that there's a fight and we need to join the battle because there is opposition mm-hmm. um, we shouldn't be surprised by it um, we don't have to hate we don't have to hide yeah. instead we need to help fight uh, and I love this what Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy which I don't know if people know this but Timothy was serving in Ephesus and uh, this is what Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 24. He says, The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. Mm -hmm. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth, 
and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. Mm. Here's what I love about this. The people that is that, that are so easy to hate, um, like we look at, you know, it's politicians or people, you know, that are pre- presenting a, a view that is far different than our own, you know, mm-hmm. it's unbiblical, whatever it may be. Like they have been taken captive. Yes. They are prisoners. They've been cap they've been taken captive in the snare of the devil and now they've been captured to do his will. And and what Paul is trying to tell Timothy is to engage with them. Mm. Um, because God may perhaps grant them repentance that leads to a knowledge of the truth. So Kat Von D would be a great example mm-hmm. of that. How I wonder how many, you know, Christians looked upon her when she was lost and, you know, with such disdain, yeah. you know, for the, the darkness in her life. And now here she is, like she's been, she's been liberated by God. Yeah. And, uh, and so let's keep in mind that everybody, you know, we often say that everybody we meet is fighting a battle we know nothing about. Right. And the other reality is that those who do not know Jesus, um, have been taken captive yeah. by the evil one. And they are prisoners and slaves to their sin mm-hmm. and darkness. And um, the light of Jesus can free them from that darkness. Yes. Yeah. And in no way should we ever be like, you know, angry towards them. And Jesus showed us that. And uh, we, we talked about this quote beforehand uh, of how it's, it is a quote by Billy Graham. He said, uh, it's Jesus's job to judge. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. And it's my job to love. Mm, amen. Um, yeah, I'll leave on that. I think that's a good way to end it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time.